Uh, my name's David Brady. Uh, I'm a transgender woman. I've, uh, I'm also a military veteran, Vietnam era veteran, and um, I became homeless in 2009 after I lost my job during the Bush recession. I'm not homeless now. Um, thanks to the VA, I have housing. Um, I was homeless six years ago. I spent over a year on the streets here in Denver, and believe it or not, there were many, many more uh, parks with uh, public bathroom facilities six years ago than there are now. The city has systematically closed down and fenced off most of these facilities. Uh, if you're homeless, especially if you're a woman, you have to find a place to, to use the facilities to perform your natural functions. And unfortunately, in the city of Denver, if you're homeless, there is no place to go. And um, these bathrooms are open during the day for the shoppers and the office workers, but uh, they're closed at night. And I don't know about you, but um, there's many times during the night when I have to use the facilities and if they're not available, it makes things really difficult, it makes life difficult. There is a mobile bathroom in the city, but it changes locations every five days, and you have to go online to denvergov.org or call 311 and, and wait on hold until somebody comes on the line and tells you where the bathroom is that day. People should care about human dignity for everyone. We're all human beings and we share this earth together and we should have respect for each other and it shouldn't depend on whether or not you have a place to call home. If you're homeless, the Denver government uh, insists that you be fed inside, out of sight, so nobody's walking past watching homeless people sitting there eating good nutritious food. It's perfectly all right for them to be eating food that they bought from a vendor because the city makes money off of that. They don't make any money when somebody's giving away free food to homeless people. Food Not Bombs puts on a nice uh, feed every Tuesday right here. They have problems. The police openly harass them. Uh, if there's more than 25 of them there, they're required to have a permit. And um, they have no access to uh, city water while they're here feeding people, but they provide good nutritional food for homeless people every Tuesday afternoon here. I tell you one thing, you don't get healthy food in the shelters. You get a lot of pasta because it's cheap. The food is not healthy, but it is definitely fattening. I noticed I gained weight when I was in the shelters and I wasn't eating as much as I would normally eat. The city encourages vendors to come into the park and sell their food to uh, office workers and uh, tourists or anyone who can afford it. If someone's giving away free food, the city doesn't want you here competing with their businesses that they bring in here to sell food. Human beings are required to sleep. It is a physical requirement. Just like having to use the facilities is a physical requirement. You can't avoid it. And if you're forced to live in public, then you're forced to sleep in public. And the city has made that illegal. And that just drives me crazy. They've fenced off alleys. Any place where they see people surviving in public, they make it impossible as, as, as they can to for that to continue. And then they force you out into the open so that they can constantly harass you when you're just trying to get some sleep. Well, as you can see, these uh, benches are fairly comfortable to sit on for public benches, but apparently the city uh, spent a lot of money with some engineering company to design them so that it's impossible to sleep on. I couldn't imagine trying to lay down on these things You'd be very sore if you got much sleep at all when you woke up. People should care because homeless people are human beings. The only difference between them and house people are that they have to survive in public. They don't have a door to lock. They have to survive in public. And the city is doing their damnedest to make that impossible because what the city wants is for the tourists not to see people surviving in public. 
They don't want to see people trying to get some sleep. They want, to, they want us to disappear, but they don't care where we disappear to, just as long as we disappear. I'm here as a defendant in the, um, the case where the city, the government, is prosecuting the three of us for surviving in public space. Um, this is the first time ever that anybody has taken one of these tickets, traditionally named the Unauthorized Camping Ordinance, but better named the Survival Ban, um, to, out to court here in Denver to try this and to plead not guilty, to say that this is not a camping ban, this is surviving. We are probably going to be in court here for a number of days, and we don't know what the outcome is going to be, but we know that whatever happens, this is a time for us to stand strong and refuse to let the government try to push us away, try to hide us, and tell to tr try to tell us that we can't survive by using blankets, tarps, basic gear in weather like this, where there is no choice but to use that in order to survive. The mayor, shortly after um, that we were ticketed, made a directive to say that police could not take survival gear as evidence of camping as they did to Jerry and Randy. This order that the mayor gave uh, is only going until April. It's April now. Do you think that it's a good idea to sleep out in this weather without a tarp or without a sleeping bag? Do you think that it's a good idea for the mayor to now tell cops, okay, now it's fine, now that the weather is supposedly nice, now that it's April, now it's fine, tell people that they can't survive, to tell people that they're going to, to take people's blankets, literally, from them.